So if we look at the foot as a twisted plate like this, it has three points of contact with the earth. You could make a case for having four corners to the foot, and I've heard people make cases for it, but I think it's more, I think it's more useful to talk about the three corners of the foot for a couple of reasons. One is that three corners is more adaptable than four corners. Four, a four-legged structure you can throw off balance by, by um, changing the height of one of the legs. A three-legged structure can, can, can adapt to all kinds of surfaces. It won't necessarily stay flat on top, but it can balance on all kinds of surfaces without um, tipping over or wobbling. A three-legged stool is more stable than a four-legged one because as soon as I change the height of one leg, this is no longer stable. So three points of contact gives us more adaptability to an uneven surface. And we don't spend a lot of time, well, you might, I don't spend a lot of time on uneven surfaces, like walking on sand or grass or anything. I spend most of my time walking on concrete, which is sometimes quite uneven. But our foot has the ability to adapt to uneven surfaces. And it's wonderful in that ability to do that, because like in the spine, we were talking about shock absorption through the curves of the spine, that ability of the foot to adapt helps absorb some of the force that we have traveling up then into our body. And if our foot is not able to adapt to those forces coming in or the effect of being on an uneven surface, something else is going to have to, like the ankle, and if not the ankle, the knee, if not the knee, the hip, not the hip, the spine, SI joint, spine, all the way up sometimes into the neck. So sometimes what we have going on in our neck is a result of what's going on in our feet or causing what's going on in our feet. But because our feet are the place where we meet the earth, there's often all kinds of stuff that happens there that if it doesn't get sorted out at the feet, will have repercussions all the way up, as you might notice when you stand for a while and don't. Dis, uh, disperse it, discharge it. The other reason um, for having the three points of contact or for thinking the foot as having three points of contact is that this organization of the talus over the calcaneus is important for getting the weight to get into the calcaneus. And if the talus slides medially, and we roll to the inner heel or pour too much weight even inside of the heel, which this foot is actually doing quite nicely here, it'll be harder to get the weight into the heel foot. And there'll be this kind of dropping and collapse through the inner part of the foot. Now, we can make up for that by lifting our arch. And there's all kinds of ways you can lift your arch. You can use the muscles to lift it up. I would suggest that instead we want to organize the bones in such a way that we get the weight to fall into the calcaneus. And we find calcaneus to heel foot as the place where we receive weight. And that from that, the rest of the arches of the foot will rise. Rather than flexing the foot, yes. And rather than doing things like picking up your toes to lift the arch of your foot. And rather than actually, even if you do it from underneath, like flexing, lifting the arch of the foot to lift the arch of the foot. I think that the arch of the foot arises from this twist in the foot, from this twisted plate idea. And we can have an arch in our foot, but not have a clear pathway of weight. But if we have a clear pathway of weight, the arch will be what it needs to be.